We're gonna cook today a steak and salad. I'm gonna I'm gonna cook this cotte boeuf from the butchers, but also I'm gonna make like a zingy salad from the punterelle. So it's gonna be like sour, fishy, garlicky. It's gonna hit you around the face with lots of flavor. But also I've got these exotic mushrooms that need using up. So I thought about making like a sambal jus to go with it. So a little bit experimental today, but that's what I love about cooking, being really creative and you know, seeing if it will work out or not. I can't wait to dive in. So let's get cooking. I'm gonna give the meat a little rub with this rapeseed oil because just a little bit. So I just want to, that's it, massage it, lube it up a little bit. A cock de boeuf is like a ribeye on the bone. The butchers have tied it up nicely. That's just so that it holds its shape nicely when it cooks. And you might notice that I haven't seasoned it. That's because I'm going to give this a really good color first. And I'll tell you why later. I've got my pan smoking hot and I'm just gonna put this steak in, skin side down, and just holding it by the bone. I'm just going to give it a little bit of color and start render some of that fat. So you might need to give it a little wiggle around. Use tongs if you're not so comfortable in the kitchen. You know your pan's at the right heat when it sizzles like that. Oh, so beautiful. I love this type of cooking. Look at that. What you're looking for here is you're rendering that fat, getting a really nice golden color on it. Right, now it's ready, go in. And I'm just gonna give it a gentle press. And one of my tricks of the trade is using a press, like this chest press, give it a good old squash down, just to get an even weight and distribution on that meat. And that's gonna be it scorching hot just so it gave it a really good colour. Look at that colour there. There's a couple more minutes. I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna give it 30 seconds more in that heat. Oh look at that. I'm happy with that. Look at that even colouring. And the reason I'm gonna flip that over now and colour the other side. Right, I'm happy with that. You see, I didn't put the salt on there because the salt crystals, when you season it before, straight just before you put it in the pan, kind of stops that coloring, that nice even layer. But you want it nice and crusty across the top. You see, I want a nice even layer across the top. Now, while it's hot, I'm gonna give it the seasoning. Taking the string off and the fat's just fallen right off. That's a little unusual, but you know what? I'm not gonna let that ruin the steak. I'm gonna add in a bit of butter now and garlic. And we're gonna flavor up this bad boy. Turn this down a little bit. I'm just gonna give this good old basting. Love the color of that meat. And I'm just adding a lot of flavor into that meat by basting it, those, that butter and herbs. Right, I'm gonna put this now in the oven until that is nice and pink. Perfect. My friend the other day asked me whether I missed fine dining or any of that sort of cooking. And I said, absolutely, because I love that. I miss that. I miss that creativity and coming up with new dishes. But then I had a thought, I have the opportunity to cook at home and be creative. So one thing I do love about being in the UK is we have access to all this incredible ingredients from Europe and this punterelle being one of them. You just need to cut off the end part and then slice the punterelle and down the, the stalk. And it's gonna go in the ice water for a couple of hours and that's actually gonna make it like really like curly. So I'm gonna leave that for a few hours just to freshen up. But the salad is with this like really rich, like super garlicky anchovy dressing. And I have some of these anchovies. They're gonna go in as well. This is like pure umami. Mm. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of salt flakes in there. Just a little bit. Those anchovies are really salty. I'm gonna mash it up until it's a paste. So this salad's gonna be sour, it's gonna be tangy, it's gonna be bitter. I know that it's going to pair perfectly with that rich beef. I know this because I used to serve it and my customers loved it. For the dressing, in goes some mustard, in goes some vinegar. I want it really nice and tart, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm just gonna mix in a little bit of olive oil, like good quality olive oil, and mix it in really slowly until it makes like a really thick emulsion. Once that's done, I'm gonna set it aside for later. The puntarelli wasn't sitting in the water enough, so I'm just gonna use my chef's press to kind of hold them down. You don't just use them for meat, they're great for things like this. So I want to prepare these mushrooms next. Um, I got these king oyster mushrooms, and I'm just gonna slice them in half and just give them a gentle scoring. It looks badass. So in the same pan that I use the steak, I'm just gonna reheat that a bit more and then I add these mushrooms in. Next up, I'm gonna get the jus ready. So I've got some sambal that I've made at Meimei and I'm simply gonna add it into some veal jus and whisk it in until that infuses. Just to give it a little extra umami kick and color, I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato paste in there as well and whisk that in too and let that reduce a little bit. Pan's nice and hot. I'm just gonna get the mushrooms in, so the scored side down. So just preparing the rest of the mushrooms. I've got a mixture of fresh take and some oyster mushrooms, which I'm just going to break into smaller pieces or cut into smaller pieces so they all cook evenly. Now these are gonna add a lovely texture to the dish. And then I'm gonna add in some butter. And that is the key to getting really nice textures in your mushrooms. Give it a good colour first and oil, then add butter. Let's give them the seasoning. And those little mushrooms won't take long to cook. And it's got a really good seasoning, but I'm going to add a little bit of freshness to them. So I'm going to give it a squeeze of lemon and add in some chopped parsley. And that's really going to lift up those mushrooms. Otherwise, they're just going to be too rich for the dish. And I. What my aim is for this dish, so I'm just gonna get lots of different flavor profiles and you know, a lot of like, literally I want it to bounce off the palate with different like sweet and sour and bitterness. So obviously like when you're cooking in the kitchen and you're experimenting, this is a great t time to like, just use your senses and if you feel like you want to add something to it or you want to change it up, feel free to. That's the great thing about cooking in your own kitchen and being in charge of the dish is you always intended it that way. Yeah, so yeah, this wasn't part of the plan, but I'm excited to try it. It wasn't part of the plan that the fat would come off the meat, but I'm sure it's still going to taste delicious. It's okay. I'm going to give this meat a cut and have a look. It's been resting now for about be resting now for about 15 minutes and it feels good. I'm happy with that. It's so good. Normally I do cook it and maybe a little bit more rarer, but I'm really happy with that. It's nice and consistently pink and that garlic flavor comes through. So I know that's gonna go really well with these mushrooms and that puntarelli salad. So let's go put everything together. I'm really happy with the puntarelli. It's all crispened up really nicely. So it's ready for that dressing. I'm gonna add in some of that parsley. I'm gonna go quite generously with some capers. And of course, because you guys know I love spice and heat, I'm gonna add some smoked chili flakes. This not traditional, I know, but I just want to add it in there because I think it's gonna add a, a nice addition to the salad dish. I'm gonna give it a good old mix. I'm gonna want to serve this straight away though, because if you mix it, when I put the dressing on, it's gonna start wilting. Those acids are gonna start breaking down there. I'm going to go for this piece here. Oh my god. I thought I'd just pass the jus just to get a little bit more of a refined finish because there's a lot of quite chunky chilli flakes and dried chilli in that sambal. And I just added chilli flakes into the salad so I didn't want to overkill it with that chilli. All right, I'm going to serve the puntarelli on the side because I think the salad is like the star of its own show as well. So I'm not gonna plate that with the beef. Make sure I've got a little bit of everything on there. What I love about this salad is it's quite 
It's quite funky, it's got its own texture and it's a life of its own there. Right, I'm going to plate mushrooms underneath. So I'm gonna put like these big ones here, some of the smaller ones in the middle. I think that'd be plenty for a portion. I'm add the jus. Then I'm gonna add in the meat. And then go for these nice pieces here. Should we go four? No, three's a, three's a nice number when you're plating. And then I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of that. It's almost like treacle now. Maybe it's the sugars in the sambal. And maybe in true millennial chef style, I'm gonna add some pea shoots on there because it has this like pop of green and the tendrils, the bringing this to the tendrils remind me a little bit of the punterelli. Hmm, I'd be pretty happy if I got that served in a restaurant. Don't know about you guys. That is like a textural heaven. I highly recommend make that one if you can get hold of this punterelli. If you can't, I would maybe suggest getting hold of some chicory and slice it the same way. And it'd be still just as good. Is this something I'm gonna make every day? Absolutely not. Have I had good fun being in the kitchen, being creative again? Absolutely. You're only limited by your own imagination and your own creativity. So it's your kitchen. There are no rules. It's okay to have some failures. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to overcook that meat a little bit more than you prefer. It doesn't matter. As long as it tastes good, that's the main goal. Let's give us a go. I'm just gonna go straight in there. Oh shit. That sambal juice is really spicy. <laughs> I'm so glad I added a little bit of that tomato paste. It kind of makes it like treacly. It's almost too pretty to eat. Oh my God. Like it's got that heat. And it's kind of got that like, tingle on the back of your throat, but it's not like Szechuan where it's numbing. It's not like, too much chili without it's overpowering everything else. I can still taste that veal jus and that beefiness and the mushroom is giving like all, all this like nutty flavor. Honestly, that is a winner. That is such a nice texture because I cooked that steak and let it rest for quite a long time. It's just so tender and soft and the mushrooms are giving it a nice texture. So it's almost like you don't even notice there's no carbs in this dish because the mushrooms are like having potatoes. And that punterelli is so bitter. It's all like, I got a little like dance in, like a party in my mouth at the moment. I'm so happy with that. I'm so glad I got to experiment with some of these crazy ideas I've had stuck in my head for a little while and I'm able to put them onto a plate and share with you. If you're adventure enough, adventurous enough to recreate this, I, I highly recommend it. If you've liked this video, please do give us a comment. Have you enjoyed some of this more experimental cooking? Or do you, shall I just go back to cooking some of the traditional stuff? Well, thanks for joining me today. I've had really good fun in the kitchen and I hope you have too. I'm going to devour the rest of this and I'll see you guys next week. I feel like I relate to Sambal Jus because it's a bit like, I'm a spicy Asian. I'm also a classical French trained chef. It's delicious.